In this video, we're going to bind the book J table to the books database table. Now, binding the books database table is slightly more complicated than binding the authors table for the simple reason that every book has an author. So along with the book, we're going to have to display the author as well. But like I said, it's only slightly more complicated. Okay, so we start off by creating our, our method. We'll make it a private uh, method because it's accessible only inside the class. And we'll call it bind a books table. It receives no parameters. Right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, an entity manager factory. Call it EMF. All right, just as I did before, persistence dot create entity manager factory. We bring in the name of the persistence unit. There we go. And now I create a JPA controller. So I'll say BJC books JPA controller. Call it controller. Oops. All right, now I'm going to use this controller to bring in my uh, list of books that are in the database. So I'll uh, create a new list of type books. Right, and how do we bring back all the books from the database? We use the controller's find books entities method. So the find books entities is a equivalent to a select all. It brings back everything from the books table. Right, and now I have all my books inside this books list table. I can start uh, creating my table model. So just as before, I'm going to create a default table model. Call it model is equal to new default table model. And the first thing I'm going to do is to set the column identifiers for this model. And remember when you're setting the column uh, identifiers, you need a string array. All right, you can, set, you can create the string array separately and then simply place it in here or you can create it directly in here as I'm about to do. So it's new string array. Remember, you to demarcate the start and end of your array, you'll use curly braces. Now, what columns are we going to have in this books table? We're going to have, firstly, the ID column. Now, the ID column is one of those columns that's going to be hidden. It's going to be there, but not visible to the user, because the only reason for having the ID column is to be able to carry out database functions. So it's there for the sake of the app, not for the sake of the user. All right. Next one would be title. Next would be edition, author, and finally, author ID. The author ID will also be one of those hidden uh, columns. And it's there simply to uh, be able to uh, delete an author or to check uh, the database against the authors. All right, so we've got the first row of our table sorted, which is the column headers or the column identifiers. Now to populate the remainder of the rows of the table. For now, for that, we're going to use a, a for loop. And this is how it's done. Now I'm going to populate the table model with uh, the books from the book list. Okay, the first thing I'm going to need is an author for each book. All right, so I'm going to create a string type variable before the loop. I'm going to call it author name. And for the time being, I'm going to set it to a blank uh, string. And now inside my loop, I'm going to populate the author name with the author's surname and name. This is just to simplify the creating of the row. 
as you will see. So author name is equal to book dot get get author dot we'll put the surname first followed by a comma space and then the first name. Okay, and now you can see we can simply plug this into the, uh, the row and uh, we'll get all of this. So I did this simply to save space on the line. We don't want this, this extra long line that uh, becomes difficult to read. Okay, so we're going to set a row. Model dot add row. And we're going to put a string array inside there, just as we did before. New string. And we'll put in all the data we need, and we'll put it in an order that corresponds to the column headers. All right, so the first thing is book.getID. Now, this ID of the book is integer type, remember? So it's going to uh, give us an error if we try to save it as a, or we try to put it into a string array. So we need to call the toString method of this, uh, of this uh, of, uh, book.getID to convert the ID into a string. All right, next item to go in will be the title. No issues here because the title is of type string. Edition, perfect, it is of type string. Author name, which is the variable that we created that includes all of this. And finally, the author's ID. Get ID dot to a string. All right, perfect. So if you look at it, we are creating a new array inside here on the fly. We're creating this array. So we're placing in there book.getid.toString, followed by book.gettitle, followed by book.getedition, then the author name, and then the ID of the author. All right, so far so good. This looks like we're almost there. Now the last thing to do, as we did previously, is to bind the book to or the book table to this model that we just created. So we're going to say TBL books dot set model. And we can see that NetBeans has already placed in the, the name of the model in there. Fantastic. The last thing we're going to do is to call this method inside the constructor. All right, so just below bind authors table, we can bind books table. Time to run our program. It does tend to take a bit of time. All right. And there we go. So my books table is now bound to the front end of my application. The next thing we're going to do is to hide these two columns. In fact, in the authors table, we need to hide the ID table. And in the books table, we need uh, the ID column. And in the books table, we need to hide the ID and the ID author ID columns. OK, so how do we go about hiding these columns? Let's start with uh, the ID column in the author table. Firstly, let's uh, end this program. And we'll go to the bind authors table. Now at the end of the method, after we've set the model to uh, the table, we call up the tables. Uh, there's a special method inside the table that's called get column model, right? So, and the get column model has a, or the column model rather, has 
a, uh, a method called get column. So we're going to get the first column. Now the first column index number is zero. It works just like an array. Java n uh, columns your uh, it n it numbers your columns according to arrays uh, the, the array numbering scheme. So column one will actually have an index of zero, and we're going to set it three widths. All right. There's a preferred width a min width, a max width, and a preferred width. So we'll set min width to zero. And we'll do the same thing in the next couple of lines. Copy that and paste it, paste it again. So we'll set the max width and the preferred width looking good. Let's save that and test it out. And there we have it. The ID column has been hidden away. Now we're going to use the exact same method to hide the two columns in the book uh, table, the ID column and the author ID table uh, column. All right, so let's cancel this and go to the books table. And we're going to use the exact same method. So table books dot get column model. get column zero dot set min width to zero and then we set its max width and its preferred width all right and we'll do the same thing with the last column. So the last column will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I simply copy all these lines, paste them, and we'll change the index number from 0 to 4. All right, time to test this. takes a bit of time again as usual and there we have it in the books table we just have three columns left the other two columns have been hidden away